Let's to Jesus. Our God never changes. His word remains. Whatever he says, it's been said. If the Lord gives an order for your blessing or in your victory, it's been decreed. Because our God, God, our God is the God, the Lord of our lives. I invite the church to stand up. We're going to open our Bibles in Exodus. Exodus chapter 15. Well, we don't have much to say because the presence of the Lord is being manifested in this place. We can feel the touch and the Holy Spirit walking amongst us, the fellowship, which is great because the Lord is present. We leave moments of feast. It's a moment to glorify the Lord. Exodus 15, verse 23, from 23 to 27. Now, when they came to Amara, they could not drink the waters of Amara, for they were bitter. Therefore, the name of it what was called Amara, and the people complained uh, against Moses, saying, What shall we drink? So he cried out to the Lord, and the Lord showed him a tree. When he, in a few versions, says, the kindle. When he cast it into the waters, the waters were made sweet. There he made a statute and an ordinance for them, and there he tested them and said, If you diligently heed the voice of the Lord your God and do what is right in his sight, give ear to his commandments and keep his all his statutes, I will put none of the diseases on you which I have brought on the Egyptians, for I am the Lord who heals you. Then they came to Elim, where there were twelve wheel, wheels of water and seventy palm trees. So they uh, camped there by the water. My brethren, chapter 15 of Exodus describes to us a moment of happiness. In the first verses, before chapter 15, we will see here the promise of the Lord being fulfilled in the life of the people. The Lord had already said that He would take people, the people out of Egypt, and with mighty hands the Lord has done it. And on chapter 15, in the beginning of chapter 15, what we will see, we will see a moment of celebration. Moses, citing here a moment of praise, he begins to speak about everything that the Lord has done for the people and the way in which the Lord has given victories to his people, the way in which the enemy had been ashamed and the way in which the enemy had been defeated. Miriam enters into the glorification also with other sisters and they sing to the Lord and dance to the Lord. So it, it was a glorious moment, a moment of glorification to the Lord for the great blessing. The Red Sea opened up and the people passed through. And now they were glorifying the Lord, like us here. This service is a, ser a festive service because with joy, the Red Sea opened up for those brethren and they were able to enter and the miracle happened. And now they are here, free, delivered from the world, delivered from every injustice, 
delivered from any judgment that would lead them to death. Today, the church glorified the Lord for this great blessing. And now we can remember, I imagine them, everything that they went through, everything that they had to go through to arrive to this moment, where would they be if it were not for the Lord? Where would we be if it were not for the Lord? Where would the pe Egyptian people, or actually the people of Israel in Egypt, if it were not for the Lord, they would still be there to this day, enslaved, working, and they would also be a slave to the world, waiting only, waiting, counting their days towards death, away from the Lord. But here they are, glorifying the Lord, and we as a church, are, are we are testimonies of this, of the choice that they made the anointing. They have been carried by the Holy Spirit to choose the Lord. And now the verse that we read, three days after the, the opening of the Red Sea, the people were walking in the desert, and now on one of their stops, they arrived to a place called Mara. The thirst was great. They have been walking for three days in the desert. You can imagine. Thousands of people walking on the desert and now they arrived to a place where there was water for them to drink, where there was water to quench their thirst, where they could rest a little bit. But the word tells us that they were not able to drink of the water because the water was not proper to be consumed. If they drank this water, they would be sick. If they drank of this water, they would not be able, for sure, they would probably be contaminated in some way. They were forbidden. They could not drink of the water because this water was bitter. And now they began to complain. Hey, Moses, what now? What are we going to do? And Moses did what he always did. Moses did what he had learned from the Lord. He went to God's feet. And the Lord now tells Moses, Moses, come here. You see this tree? You see this, this candle? Throw it on the water. And Moses, Moses for sure picked up a piece of this tree and threw it over the waters. And when it, when it takes place, the word tells us that the water became fresh water. The bitterness went away. And now they were able to drink of that water. And so, my brethren, this word speaks exactly of the moment in which the servants, these seven brethren, they are going through now at this moment. To this day, from the moment that they have been taken away from the world, from the moment that they began to walk on the Lord. From the moment the Red Sea opened up, from the moment that they let go of the world and began to serve the Lord, everything was wonderful. Everything was festivity. The miracles were happening, the first love, the joy of serving the Lord, to know the Word of God, to become aware of the spiritual gifts, to become aware of the, the prophecies, to see what they had never seen before. And it was to live in the dependency on the Lord. And that's what God does. The people of Israel, they needed, they simply needed to depend on the Lord. It was a new beginning in their lives. And they needed, they didn't know how to deal with their new situation. They let go of everything. 400 years with a mindset that had already been established in their lives. They were more Egyptians than Hebrews. All of those that had departed from Egypt, they were born in Egypt. But now the Lord needed to show to them one thing. I am God. They needed to forget what they had, their experiences in life. They now needed to leave them and depending on the Lord. From that moment forward, they would have a new life. 
from that moment forward, Pharaoh had already been defeated and the Pharaoh no longer had power over them. And in the same way, the servants here have already been delivered. They have a new life that is ahead of them. They have a new walk. They have a new dynamic, something new that the Lord wants to show to them. Until then, everything was bitter, sin, suffering, the desperation. They didn't know what would happen with their lives away from the Lord. Everything was bitter. They were beginning to know the Lord, but they were still, still uh, leftovers from the world, what they had carried with them from the world. Everything was bitter. They could not drink. Even though they were tired, even though they were in the presence of the Lord, but many times they could not drink. And the word says that in the world you have afflictions. The world is bitter. Suffering. But be, a go be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. Until then, many of them, like all of us, we had our own experiences with suffering, with disappointments, living in the world. That's what. That's all you have. All you only have bitterness. And now they have met the church. They have been introduced to a denomination. And now they have chosen to baptize in the waters, becoming members of a church. But none of this is enough. It is part, but this is not the sufficient. Because in the world you have afflictions. In religion, many have disappointments. It is written in the Word of God. The Word says that in the world you have afflictions, but we can add to this. In religion, you will have disappointments. But in Jesus, you, we will have salvation. That's why when Moses prayed to the Lord, the Lord has shown to him the wood. This wood was thrown over the waters. And when it happens, the bitter water became sweet. And you know why? Because the, the wood is Jesus. When we are introduced to Jesus, when man is led to know Jesus, who is the king of the one who was the one who be, have become man and died for us, but has been victorious on our behalf. When man knows Jesus and finds the miracle, the blessing which is to be in Jesus, everything becomes new. The sadness go, goes away, the disappointment goes away, the deceit goes away, the lack of faith, the incredulity goes away, Every, and everything becomes uh, fresh, fresh like and sweet like the honey. Because the revelation of Jesus to man does that. Jesus has removed our pains. He has carried our suffering. Jesus on the cross carried everything that would uh, bring us down. And today we can drink of this water. Today we can enjoy of this life in Christ. Today we can continue to walk because we have been our thirst has been quenched because Jesus, because the Holy Spirit took care, control of our lives, and they are witnesses of this, because the li because life continues. The baptism is just a demonstration to the world of a choice that they that they have made, but they need to be in Jesus. Otherwise, the baptism is not going to lead them anywhere, and the word continues staying that if you pay attention to the voice of your Lord and do what is righteous according to his eyes and, and pay attention to his commandments and keep all his statutes, none of the sickness that will place upon you that I pl place upon Egypt because I'm the God that heals you. My brethren, you are here. This word is for you. 
You are going through a walk now. There is a long walk ahead of you. You have become a member of a church, but you also, you from this moment forward, you need to become servants of the Lord. You need to become servants of the one who is speaking with you, the one who is giving you instruction, because the commandment of the Lord are there. They are in the Word. You need to find experiences on the Lord. You need to depend on the Lord. In the difficult moments, the moments of sadness, the moments of difficulties, you need to run to the Lord. Because it is the Lord that is going to give you direction. It's not the pastor, it's not the church. It's, no, it's the Lord. Because for as long as you are in the Lord, or as long as you are heeding to the voice of the Lord, you will hear and you will see the miracle from the part of the Lord. And that's what the Lord has for us tonight. We as a church, it is exactly this. We who have gone through this moment, we cannot forget this. We have a call. We, have, we uh, need to make a stand. And our position is to be and depending completely on the Lord. So here's the word I, I leave to the brethren that came down to the waters and also for, to all of us. The bitterness, the suffering, the sadness is no longer is part of the life of the servant of God. You know why? Because we already know Jesus. And Jesus has already fought and has been victorious on our fight on our fights. Jesus had has turned our defeat into victories. Jesus has already turned our sadness in, into joy. And today we can glorify the of the Lord. We can give a shot of victory because to this day, the Lord has blessed us, and He will continue to bless us, bless do, and helping those who serve Him and seek Him. Amen. So here's the message to the brethren. The advice from the Lord. The secret to victory is this. Everything is at your disposal. You have the word, the means of grace, the voice from the Lord, the spiritual gifts, grab onto this water because this water is fresh fresh you can drink of this water because the the tightness may come the thirst may come the heat of the day is out there we are going through a desert but there here is the provision from the lord in the house of the father there is plenty of bread may the lord bless us we're going to hear a song
to Jesus. Look at the church to stand up. Here is this word, the advice from the Lord. In the beginning, and Adam disobeyed the Lord and he lost his blessing. And now, in this new beginning of your life, you need to obey the commandments, the statutes, and the advice from the Lord. If you do this, the victory is guaranteed. Amen. I'd like to invite the deacons to be here in front of me, with me. I'm going to read a text on the Word, which is in the first, first Corinthians. First Corinthians, chapter 11, verse number 23. Thank you. For I received from the Lord that I, that which I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus on the same night in which he have uh, betrayed, the, took bread, and, and he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take it, this in my body which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same manner, he also took the cup after supper, saying, this cup is, is the new covenant in my blood. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bre bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death till he comes. Therefore, whoever eats this bread or drink this cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner will be guilty of the blood and blood of the Lord. My brethren, Jesus said that I wanted to be with you in the Passover. It was the last Passover that Jesus participated. And the Lord has said here in a spiritual gift that the Lord really wanted to baptize the brethren. It was the desire of the Lord that this moment would take place. This moment in which everything became new. And now you will be able to participate on this great feast, on this banquet. Because when you do this, you will bring to the memory the return of the Lord Jesus. You will be leaving, leaving this place totally, totally satisfied, quenched, and strengthened. Because as we participate on the supper of the Lord, that's what the Lord does. He opens up our understanding. Lord, give us understanding of what is the church. And what is to be participant on the body of Christ. The Lord is going to place the fear of the Lord in your heart, heart also. What you did in the past is part of the past. Now you have a new life. Amen. Glory to God. Evangel. Marcus. The deacon Evandro may pray for the bread and Marcus for the wine. We'll give thanks, Lord, for the bread that symbolizes your body that has been crushed by for us there on the cross of Calvary. We praise you, Lord, for this moment in your presence, for this wonderful supper of the Lord. For this bread I will be shared with the brethren by your church in the name of the Lord Jesus. Lord, we praise your name also for this, for the wine that represents, Lord, the blood of your Son that was shed to the last drop to give us life, to forgive our sins, to give us salvation. The moment in which we participate in them, let us remind, remember all the suffering on behalf of our lives, we pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. Two will 
go from from the back towards the front and two will come from the front towards the back two from the back to the front and, and two from here to there the church may be seated we're going to sing a song First time I see them tired.
esse negócio não vai dar não, hein? Deixa eu servir primeiro eles. Glória to Jesus. Let me serve them first. Amen. Glória to God. Aleluia. to Jesus. Holy, holy is the name of the Lord. The church can glorify for the victory, for the presence of the Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. Amen. Glory to God. I invite the church to stand up. Glory to Jesus. Maranatha, come Lord Jesus, glory to God, hallelujah, glory to Jesus, amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Beloved church, I give it to something that cannot be compared because you are my beloved I have shed my blood for you can I tell you that this action was to purchase our lives your lives to be forever beside me so give great worth every instant that you participate on the body and on the fellowship and I will be taking care of each one of you until his decree the order from my father to come here and take your life to be with me in heaven so I tell you always remain seeking your God above all things and you will never lack the care 
and will never. My children, you will never be forsaken. You are now part of a faithful church that will be with me. That's the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. We can participate firstly the bread and then afterwards the wine. Go to God. Hallelujah. Lord to God, Lord to God, Hallelujah, Hallelujah. Holy, holy is the name of the Lord. Got a word, a glorification of the Lord from one of the ushers or deacons. Lord. Exalt your name, Lord. For the sacrifice of your Son on that cross. Lord. Our desire is to be with you, Lord. Praise in the name of Jesus. The church may be seated. The cups are going to be uh, taken back.
glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. What is your name, Lord?
Blessed be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. What is your name, Lord? Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. Hallelujah. What is your name, Lord? Jesus. Move the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God, our good and eternal Father, and sweet and tender consolation of the Holy Spirit be with the people of God, now and forevermore. Amen. Amen. The church may be seated. We want to thank you who are here with us. I mean, the period of the service and the baptism and the period of the stuff of the Lord, I want to say that you are welcome to this place. We have every Saturday at 6 of the afternoon, we have a women meeting and 7.30, we have a service of glorification of the Lord. Today was a special service because of the baptism. The last baptism that we're going to have here in the church, probably our next one is going to be on the new property in Coral Springs. You are invited also to go and participate on the day of the consecration of the temple. It's going to be announced to the church and the community here in the field in Coral Spring, Pompano Beach, Boca Raton. We're going to make an evangelization and invite people to know this new place. And you, my ladies and gentlemen, you are invited to participate. Well, we are here to pray for your life and to give instruction and clarify regarding what you have seen and heard here tonight. Tomorrow at 1030, we'll have Sunday school. You can come, bring your relatives and friends to participate with us. And once again, at 730 p.m. tomorrow, we're going to have another service glorification to the Lord. Amen. We have seven people that baptized uh, today. For us, it's a great joy for the church. They will be there on the back of the temple receiving the greetings and the embrace of the church and the family members who are here. Amen. You can take a couple of pictures of them. That's a moment, a special moment for them. You only get baptized once. Amen. And to all, the peace of the Lord. Amen.